So here we are today talking about uh, Wool Week, 10th anniversary of Wool Week. Um, it's, it's been a long time, but it's been an amazing journey. Uh, and John Smedley's been involved also for a long time with, with Wool Week. Um, I'm the managing director of John Smedley, um, and I'm a member of the family that owns the business. And uh, our business is uh, 236 years old this year. Um, we've been making knitwear in our factories in Derbyshire and in Yorkshire um, probably for more than 150 years. I think originally the business was a cotton spinning business, uh, but then wool was introduced a bit later. And wool has always been a very important fibre to our business and probably more so today than, than any other because it is known to be a, shall we say, a, a more sustainable um, fibre than, than perhaps cotton is. Um, we've been sourcing our wool from different countries over the, over the decades, but today it comes from New Zealand. Uh, we spin our wool in Italy and we knit it in England. So quite a journey. <laughs> so Georgia, tell us, tell us a little bit about you. How did you come to, to do uh, design at uh, Derby University? Um, so I've just always been quite creative and had an interest in design and then I did it for textiles for GCSC and A-level and then it was just what I felt was I was best at and what I needed to do. So just started uni of Derby and yes, just gone on from there really. And is it a three year course that yeah, you're doing? I'm doing a three year textile design course. Yeah. So. And you're into your just starting your third yeah, year. Yeah, very scary. Well done. <laughs> Bit and what do they make you do in the third year that's different from the, the previous two um, years? it's more just um, your own projects, like you you're just on your own really. Mm really exploring your own ideas and your own thought processes yeah. and then playing on all the different machines and coming up with something creative and new hopefully. So do they have knitting machines for wool and cotton at the, at the university? Yeah so we have um, like your traditional domestic machines. The hand flat machines yeah. that you operate manually. Yeah. And then we've got Duvier machines okay. and then Shima Seiki machines as well oh, yes. and a monarch so lots of different things to try. A lot try of creativity yeah, possible but, but also quite a lot of hard work I imagine trying to get yeah, those to. Yeah I spend a lot of time at uni but so that's all worth it in the end hopefully. And this particular project can you remember how you heard about it at the start and why um, you thought you'd have well, a go? John Smedley and Campaign for War approached us and Nottingham Trent Uni mm. to which are their local unis to come up with something that champion nature in to create something for War Week, mm. really. And and, uh, and and you had a had a think about that and came up with your your idea. Can you tell yeah. us a little about about your inspirations for? So for I the started garment? off by researching an artist called Melvin Evans. They did a lot of landscapes oh, and right. rock faces in yeah. lino cutting. So I took and I'm quite interested in sort of abstract shapes and things like that. So I just started researching further and just a lot of it reminded me of sort of erosion and cliff faces so through time it just developed into a lot of um, yeah rock structures and formations and things reminded me of like Dirtle Door things like that which I used to go on holiday with oh, right, to okay. when I was younger so and your family used to yeah, go down to the Dorset coast and, yeah so yeah. it's very much sort of in that and then I sort of wanted to capture all things British with my designs, so I went with a feral style yoke jumper mm. to try and sort of keep things British, feral islands, like traditional British wool yeah. things. Yeah, just somehow with a bit of Photoshop and shimmering, it developed into a sample and well a done. design. Well, I I, uh, I confess a particular interest in this area because I I studied uh, geography at school mm. and then I went on to study geography at university and I remember one of my school trips was to this coastline down yeah. in Dorset many many years ago and it's an extraordinary uh, physical landscape because you have these big varieties of different rocks types and rock structures yeah. in, in quite a short uh, space yeah. along the coast and um, Lulworth Cove and and the door that we see here is one of the most iconic parts of that um, mm, that location. So uh, I think you've done an amazing job to capture the structures in your design, 
Um, what challenges did you find with the with the material itself? Did you use Shima for this, yeah, or did you so use this some is, other? Um, a Shima ten gauge sample. Yeah. With intarsia, and I struggled with not on this one, but on another one when I was like pulling out some of the bits, it would like all unravel. But no got mind. there in the end. Well done. <laughs> and then I quite like how it's got the little flex coming through, just to make it a bit more sort of textured and bit more patterned. And was it was it a challenge in programming terms? Because I mean I know in our business we have shooting machines and mm. programming them is quite hard work. So yeah. <laughs> how did you how did you tackle that? Well I just it's quite Do the tutors know quite yeah, a lot about the programming had, of the machines. Yeah, yeah, one of our tutors is very, very experienced in machine. Well, that's good. It's amazing. Um but yeah, so I had a lot of help but yeah, I've enjoyed playing around with the Shima and different things you can do with it. So mm. So yeah, one aspect of the competition is that um, uh, the winner gets to uh, work experience with John Smedley. So we're going to organise that for you. Yeah, and lovely. I think the new year will probably be a good timing for that. Yeah. Um, and you'll come and join us at Lee Mills uh, in Matlock, our head office, mm -hmm. uh, where our design team and our new product development team are. And uh, we'd very much like to, to help you to understand a little bit about how we do things. Yeah. Um, obviously, you you know it manifests itself in what you see here, but there's a lot that goes on behind <laughs> behind the surface, shall we say? And um, and we'd like you to work with the design team and the new product development team to understand, and I suppose apply some of the things that you've learned, perhaps mm. in a theoretical sense at the university, yeah, and really put them into the to the working environment. So yeah, I hope I, you'll enjoy yeah, that when it happens. I definitely will. <laughs> Great. Yeah. And are there other garments that you've created similar to this, or have you? Is, is this a, a sort of new direction for you? This particular challenge of this competition. Um, <clears throat> I've done a lot of swatches, but I've enjoyed doing it as sort of a cohesive board. Mm. Which I mean, and having all the ideas on one page, and like showing the journey from all of like a snapshots on like one thing, rather than a full sketchbook of mm. like going through everything, but. Yes, it's a little bit different, but I guess it's along the same lines as yeah. normal. Well done. And anyway, we took your design and we created yeah. the John's Medley garment and we put the campaign for wool on the tag and your, your name here. So it's all yeah. a complete article very, now. Very, very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Which is great. Yeah. Um, I think one of the aspects of making a garment like this is when you try to... What we found when we were building the, the, the samples and the, and the prototype was that to recreate um, the pattern effectively on the front, you do end up with a very complex structure yeah. inside. And um, it's how you assemble the parts of the garment um, at the end, which really, um, I think, requires the most amount of work um, to make sure that you get the right pattern appearing yeah. in the right place. Um, so luckily, my colleagues who have many years of experience <laughs> of doing this are able to to help us out in that regard, yeah. but I think it, I think it's come out really, really nicely. Yeah, no, it's lovely. It's, yeah, it's just sort of how I imagined it. And thinking about education just a little bit more widely, because that's you know that's one of the features or aspects of this competition that we've we've wanted to engage mm. in. Um, I know that you're still at university and you're still you know in a sense working on your own, but eventually you'll you'll go into the world of work and you'll yeah. join a company probably. And one of the things to remember when you do that is that not only do individuals um, benefit from education in so many ways, but, but organisations do too. So the company, in its own right, has to, in a sense, keep moving forward. And it does that by sort of collectively learning and then capturing that learning in various different ways. Yeah. And if it does that uh, successfully, shall we say, then ultimately, you know, the company will be a success as well. Mm. So, you know, to us as a company, it's very important not just to educate individuals, but to make sure that when those individuals interact together in teams and build um, groups within the company, whether it's the design group or the new product development group or even the production group, that when they learn things, we can somehow capture that in processes and in I suppose databases and other ways, um, so that um, when people naturally move on to different jobs or different roles, that the company can keep going as it is. Yeah. Um, so when you, you know, I, th I would say to you as you progress towards 
the world of work. Um, think about not only your own skills, but what you can bring to a team environment. And I don't know if you do any sort of teamwork in the course you're on now, or is it really only a sort of individual work that um, you do? I'd say I'm quite, me and my friends were very um, into each other's work. We sort of help each other a lot during the way. Mm. I'm always having a nosy around what other people are doing and we all give each other advice. So mm. although we do our own individual products, I say we have a lot of um, interaction and feedback from each other as well as the tutors. So I would say I get used to other people's opinions mm. and things like that along the way as well. Mm. So it will come in handy. Well done. Yeah. And and I think also what's important to us is that we we understand um, the materials that we work with, mm -hmm. and uh, in particular with wool, that not only is it um, good for us, but it's good for our customers as well. And um, wool has many amazing aspects to it. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that it's so completely biodegradable and part of the kind of carbon cycle naturally, uh, but also that it keeps you warm in the winter but a little bit cooler in mm. the summer, that it can absorb an enormous amount of moisture and still stay warm. Yeah. It's a bit of a miracle fibre <laughs> really. And, um, you know, do they, I mean, I hope they teach you into that sort of depth at mm. the university because, you know, as you go forward you'll be able to make many choices about the different kinds of materials that you want to yeah. use and is that a talking point amongst yeah. you and your colleagues? We definitely um, aim to use like high quality walls and other sort of yarns so we're not just buying like using acrylic or whatever just to make it cheap because you want your if you're putting all this effort into your samples into your garments you don't want them then just to be itchy and horrible you want mm. them to be wearable and luxury with mm. all the time you've put in so yeah, we learn a lot about different sort of yarns, what's good for what, things like that. So mm -hmm. it's very interesting. And is sustainability a, a big topic of conversation mm. amongst the group? Yeah, I very, I like the idea of sustainability. I think mm. that's definitely where the world's going and where it has to go. So I do take quite a strong interest in that. We do a lot of sort of contextual work around sort of like um, current problems and things like that, Sustain sustainability comes up there mm. quite a bit, so yeah, I'd say it's where you, know, you have to educate yourself on it because it's what the future's going to be mm. realistically, a lot of a bigger emphasis on making things last, not so much fast fashion, Yes. things like that, so. Certainly yeah. that's what, I mean, we feel that at the moment it's, I don't know what, what you're hearing from your tutors and on your course, but I would say it's almost impossible to know what is, a, is the most sustainable material mm. or almost to be able to rank them in, in some kind of order. You know, wool has many great aspects to it, um, but it's, 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 it's whatever material you use, the common sense tells you that if you make a better quality garment and you keep mm. it for longer, then consumption yeah. is going to be overall less and that's a more sustainable path to take. So mm. um, I do believe in that and I think John Smedley as a company has always believed in that, um, right mm -hmm. back to its very origins. Um, the original owner of the business, John Smedley himself, um, decided that he would not make the cheapest garments in a sense back mm -hmm. in the day, you know, go for fast fashion, whatever it was like at that time. Um, but he felt very strongly that if he made a high quality garment that his consumers would, would like that and they would like to be able to wear it for a long time. and um, if they liked the material itself, they'd come back and eventually buy another garment from him. And mm. that was his philosophy that he developed, yeah. you know, 150 years ago. And uh, we still retain that philosophy in the company today uh, and feel very strongly that, you know, it's completely all right if somebody buys a jumper from me and then 25 years later they bring it back to for us to fix a hole in it. Mm. I mean, that, that happens on a not irregular basis. It's <laughs> quite amazing, really. Um, but luckily, there's enough people out there who, who like John Smedley and like what we do to, to make it a sustainable business for us. And I think sustainability comes in many forms. But you know, one aspect of it is, are there good jobs for people mm. to have? And we've had many generations of families working in our business 
coming from the local area mm. around Derby and Derbyshire. And, um, you know, we'd like that to continue for a very, a very long mm. time. Um, so what I'd like to say thank you very much for your contribution to this exercise. I, I remember reviewing a, a lot of entrants yeah. uh, with a lot of different um, aspects to them. Uh, but this one did, did speak to me um, on, on several different levels. And I think you've done a, a very good job. So, so thank you very much for thank you. contributing. Yeah, thank you.